Hi everyone, here I am finally within the Illustrator 3. Now in this video I want to quickly go over the UI of our Illustrator application here. And I could make this video last two hours because this UI is very complex and has a lot of features, a lot of things we use, and I can make it shorter. Well, I decided to make it shorter because the best way you learn how to use a tool or an application is by, by building things, by working with it, and then you will figure out things and you will see how it works and you will remember it because you just used it. So if I now start telling you what each button does, chances are you have forgotten it once this video is finished. Therefore, I'll just give you a brief introduction to how we work with this application. So this is the most recent version of um, Adobe Illustrator the 2016 version in the Creative Cloud, I guess. So if your version looks a bit different, don't worry, most of the features will be included there too. It just might look a bit different. When we start a new project or a new file and create our first artboard, this is basically where we start. This is the screen as we see it. Now this white rectangle here is our artboard. Let's pick up with the very first question. What do I mean with artboard? Artboard are basically like yeah, objects here in Adobe Illustrator on which we can paint or on which we can create our objects. But we could also do that outside of the artboards. The artboards allow us to structure our file and once we save our assets or whatever we're creating or want to print it out, it will be the artboards which are printable and saveable. So this light gray area is basically like if you imagine a desk where you can put things you like to use when working with it, but which is not the final product. Whereas your piece of paper, the white area, is what you're actually producing. And this is how you can think about these artboards here. Now obviously you don't have to make that sharp of a border here, you don't have to draw it that sharp. You can obviously store items you want to use later on your artboards too. It's all one area in the end, but this is how you differ them and it's very important as I said when it comes to saving and printing. Now if I zoom out and I do this by pressing Alt and then just scrolling, you see now I got an even lighter gray area, a darker gray area and the white box. The white box as I said is the artboard. This dark gray area here is the canvas, so this is the whole area we can use for, for drawing, for creating objects. And the light gray area, there we can't work. But this canvas is pretty damn big, as I can tell you, this white box here is, is 1024 pixels wide. So that is not that small. Now back into that. Here I'm moving around with the hand tool and I select this by pressing H or selecting it down here, this hand, and this allows me to, well, click and hold and then move around without moving any objects on which I might click. So this is the way to, to move around and as I said, zooming is done with Alt and scrolling. And as you can see, I already explained all these things you use for, yeah, for navigating here. And this is very important because these shortcuts really make working in Illustrator a lot faster. Now I'm switching back to the select tool with, by pressing V or selecting it up here. And this is a tool which will allow us to select objects and interact with them. Now currently we don't have any. We can create a new one, for example a rectangle, which is a very basic shape, by clicking here on this rectangle icon. And if we long press, we see you could create different kinds of shapes too, but I'll stick to the rectangle. You could also select it by pressing M, vice versa, to create, to create an ellipse or a circle, we would use L. And to then create this shape, I just click somewhere on my artboard and click, hold, and drag out. And this is how I create a shape. I would guess this is how you create shapes in most drawing programs or in PowerPoint or whatever. Now I created a shape, and if I click V again, I use the selection tool, and now I click somewhere outside of the shape, and you can see the shape now. As you see, it has a white fill and a black border. Now, if I don't want this, if I, let's say, want to have it no border and a black fill, I can change this in several places. And this is often the case in Illustrator, that you've got several places where you can change something. 
Now here, the easiest, the quickest way is up here, where I can select the fill, which is currently white. I might choose black here. As you can see, it has now a black fill. And for the border, it has black selected. I could use this red line here, which means none, as you can see, no border. And now it's a borderless rectangle. Another place where I could change this is down here. These two items do exactly the same. The right one is the border, the left one is the fill. And if I wanted to quickly swap the two, so let's say I do want the black border and no fill, I just click these two arrows here and boom, now it's swapped. So this is how I can create shapes and fill them, add strokes. And if I click again on this shape, still with my selection tool, this tool here is uh, yeah, selected, you can see I can not only change the color, I can also change the width of the stroke if I would have one. Let's add a red stroke to see this. And then let, let, me give, let me give that a stroke of 5. Now you can see we have a fat red border. I can change, well, how this stroke is distributed, so to say, but you know, we don't really see the difference here. It's too small, but if I zoom in closer, you see it's a little bit thicker on the left and it gets smaller when it approaches the right edge. So you can change this and a lot more. And the best way to learn it really is just to play around here with all these things. You can change the opacity on and so on. Now, another place where I can change the appearance of my shapes is here on the right under the appearance window. If you don't see that, go to window, appearance. And this is true for all the windows we're using throughout this course. As you see, many windows here are not visible for me right now. And I can always select them or make them visible by just clicking on them here, and then they will be either added here or they will just pop out here in the well, in the main area, so to say. Uh, as I said, all the functionalities we got here will be something we will learn on the job because that is the easiest and most fun way to learn it. But some basics won't hurt to have right now. So navigating around by pressing H for hand tool and then just clicking and dragging, zooming with Alt and scrolling or by pressing Z or here clicking the magn magnifying glass to get the zoom tool. And here if we press Alt we zoom out. And if we don't press anything but just left click, we zoom in. Can also create, uh, can also drag and hold to zoom in dynamically. So this is how we travel around here, how we create basic shapes. Now, what are all the other icons here? Many of them you'll use very rarely or just for certain yeah, use cases. One important tool is the pen tool here, or P on the keyboard. What this tool is, it allows you to draw a shape. And we've got some helpers here too. So if I click somewhere, I created the first point of my shape. And then you can see I got this little line here indicating where well, the line would be drawn if I now click again. I can hold shift to make that only jump in 45 degree uh, steps so that I can draw well uh, straight lines. And I could click here, click here, then go up and as you can see I got the smart guides here. Click here and click here and now I would have a rectangle too. It is pretty identical to this one but this was created with the pen tool. Now obviously you would not use the pen tool for creating rectangles but rather to, play, to create different shapes like let's say this one here. Or another very important thing, you can click then click somewhere else, but hold the left mouse button and then drag to change the, the curve of the line you're drawing. And yeah, if you stretch it around, you see you can basically then draw all the shapes you want by just cleverly adjusting this. And we will use this a lot and you will then get a lot more exercise and practice with using this pen tool, but uh, it's a great tool and yeah, as you can see, it allows us to quickly create rather complex or abstract forms. For standard forms, of course, we got our circles and so on here. So that's basically it for a quick introduction and 
Now you might think, ooh, that does really feel like everything has been covered. You're absolutely right. But as I said, we're going to do this while working on actual projects because that's more fun. Let's be honest. See you in the videos. Bye.